Recording and all right, so this is our weekly prep for 4-2-2023. Uh, uh, we ended the week last week with an awesome week. Obviously, the market had a nice little rally. And uh, this was really our rally that we were expecting at the end of the year, uh, just late, and uh, showed up at the end of the quarter um, in March. So uh, we expected uh, our, our levels to be um, really respected. And we expected this year, uh, this quarterly rally, as uh, quarterlies were expiring, we talked about that JP hedge, we talked about um, what that meant for our positions here in these areas and how the market would uh, would be pulled to those areas. And once we saw that the market was responding, um, we really got some nice fireworks. So Friday, let's go down to the 15 real quick, and then let's get to it here. Friday, um, inside of the main channel and the killer wells had the at the levels uh we did some midday training we did some live training um there's some a couple of videos out there and so you can see everything that i discussed you can go back and watch my weekly prep how i highlighted 4065 being a target area on both spx and es and how we were pulled up to this area like a magnet and then once we held at this area with that pool of liquidity there uh, we saw the market respond and being pulled up. Ultimately, 4131 was the target. And I was able to do some training live while we took this trade. Majority of the day on Friday, we took the run up here. was an excellent trade. Many people like myself got over 100%. Good job. So we're going to talk about some market moving indicators right now. We're going to talk about what we can look forward to for, for the back side of the week. And uh, we're going to talk about um, key levels and how we can uh, how we can be prepared to, to crush this thing with the key levels. All right. So the first thing I want to say is let's let's just look at uh, what we have going for the week. I'm going to try to keep this uh, five minutes or so. All right. What do we have coming for the week? All right. So this is Monday. All right. Now, the first thing we need to we need to take a look at is the market has the wind behind it. There are some positive uh, catalysts behind the market. And so because of that, their strength and we have breached our level. So we know there's liquidity and a rebalance. Now we don't know where big money will reshift their positions, but they're going to obviously reshift and enroll them. We're going to find that out as they do that uh, in the upcoming week. And until that happens, we've got isms popping off and PMI manufacturing final construction spending popping off on Monday. So I expect Monday um, to be a little tighter and for us to the, you know, the run up that we got was pretty aggressive, but I expect it to be tighter. Now, ultimately, I'll get right to it. Uh, job, job numbers, jolts, that's the employment. This is the week for all of that stuff. All right. So let's go over some of that. So, so Monday, we've got some manufacturing index. That's going to be important. All right. And then let's see here. Let's take a look at Tuesday. Um, we, we've got ADP coming out. No, that's Wednesday. Tuesday, we've got jolts at 10 o'clock. So jolts are going to be coming out. That's important data for uh, monetary policy and, you know, for big money to get an idea of what the future of rate hikes is going to look like, how aggressive, et cetera. You know, that's been our story for the last year and a half, right? Year, really. So we know what to expect there. That information comes out favorable, then certainly that's going to give the feds the ammunition to continue. They're not because of the context of the market, the strength behind the market right now, and just the banking financial crisis, or I won't even call it a crisis, but the situation, um, it means that, you know, Wall Street kind of will rest a little easier. And because they, they feel that uh, Jerome and, you know, the team uh, will ease up and maintain a 25 basis point rate hike consistency uh, until there's a little more tightening in the financial sector because those two things combined rate hikes and banks collapsing that that's that's we're talking disaster right you can't have that so that would put a little pressure on the feds to kind of just hey they got to let this thing ease up for a few rate hikes just for a few uh, i don't think they're going to pause but anyway so strong job labor or strong labor market gives them even more um, uh, encouragement. It would give them the things that they need so that they can um, just basically stay the pace. And the stronger it gets, the more they'll feel confident about returning to uh, maybe even double digit rate hike or, or um, jumbo rate hikes, we'll see. Meaning more than the, 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 the typical uh, 25 basis points in the 50s and, and, and so on. But the 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 market would have to continuously get battered and hit 
right now, all eyes are really on the financial sector. All right, so let's go to Wednesday. That's Thursday there. So let's go to Wednesday. Uh, the, the big draw will be 815 ADP, non-farm payroll, and then ISM coming out. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to jump to the gun and tell you what my thoughts are just by looking at Wednesday, but I'll say this right now. Uh, I expect a little dicey week, um, a tighter week after a nice run, um, probably some beginning of the month um, jitters, maybe even a little bit of a sell-off, and I'll, I'll share with you where, I, where I'd like for this thing to go to. So 8, 15, 10 a.m., we're looking forward to that. Let's get over to Thursday. Here's Thursday. Jobless claims again on uh, eight, at, at 830. We've got some Fed members talking at about 10 o'clock and then Employment Fridays. Employment Fridays. Let's take a look at Friday. Um, 830 employment situation coming out. So this whole week is going to be after ISM manufacturing numbers coming out on Monday, which we got a good chance for this thing to kind of get some nice volatility into the market. I think it's going to be wound up tight. And I think Obviously, Wednesday is going to be our day to see what's going on. Now, that action is going to happen prior to market opening. Uh, you'll, so if you're taking advantage of the futures market, you'll be able to get involved there. And then all the way to Friday, I think we'll have some pent up action. We've got no notable, um, you know, draw on earnings. There's nothing here that I'm getting excited about that's going to be noteworthy per se. So, you know, you should be clear for your swings. Uh, you know, Killer Wells, I'll be posting the swings Monday, Tuesday. Um, likely, I will trade. Um, late open to afternoon with you guys. We're going to switch it up a little bit uh, Monday uh, in lieu of our, our previous uh, week being a nice week. Some folks who are working later in the day, I want to give them just a little opportunity Monday. So we're still going to trade the morning session, but I might start just a little later, probably 10 o'clock instead of 930. We'll see how it goes, but I, I will no doubt be with you. I just want to give some uh, new folks the opportunity to see some folks are working nights or whatever the case is. So um, it was some some folks sent to me some feedback on that. So I want to see if we can just make arrangements here and there for for what what um, for what's going on. All right. So. All right. So that's that's what we have to look forward to for uh, as far as market moving data. So now let's just talk about a couple of uh, some key levels here and and really where, where we're going here. So we. We, obviously, the futures market isn't opening right open right now. Once the futures market open, I will be looking for four one one six on the futures to hold there um, over the overnight session, right? If uh, foreign trade uh, holds there and it's positive, then I'm looking good. Now the talk right now is about OPEC and uh, you know just cutting uh, supply because of inflation risks. So think about this, we've got two major sectors that have some trouble right now. Financial and energy will be, will be going into some interesting areas. So there may be some tightening there, but just a reaction for the week. I do not believe overall that we should be worried about the uh, um, energy sector. And also we, we also take note of, you know, other um, you know hedge funds and Warren Buffett and big money that's dumping and pouring money still into energy. So still a, a strong sector. But I'll be watching for those two areas of the market and how they respect these levels and how they respond this week. So to the downside, 4116 is I'm looking for that to hold. And then to the upside here, um, obviously, we, we want to be pulled up to 4200. But I don't think that we get up there this week necessarily. I think we hover around this 415 area, this uh, 415, uh, 4150, that is. I think we hover around this area here and um, we, we, we see some liquidity shift because the tightening of uh, these two sectors will cause uh, some of those, um, you know, investors to rebalance as well as uh, those hedge funds for their positions that's sitting out there. So let's take a look at SPY. So those are my targets for, that's my range for, uh, and let's go to a higher level. That's my range for the futures. Let's go to a higher level on SPY. I've already identified some areas here on SPY that I think um, we're going to we're going to have to trade within uh, this week. So to the downside, 40262 to the upside, uh, if we're running hot, 412 and a quarter. Right. I see us pulling back to 404. Uh, no telling when we're going to do that. But uh, likely uh, if we get a move, I you know, we're going to need those positions to reshift and we're going to need the overall, overall market to hold. So here's what I'm going to do. The opening um, moment uh, when we open tomorrow, 
Um, I'll take a look at the overnight session. I'll take a look at any market moving data. And then obviously the killer wells will have the cleaner levels there for us to um, for us to trade. Now, if you've been tracking my weekly preps, then you know that I give you a nice playbook. I give you a nice range that we're going to trade in. And nine times out of 10, I've been correct. You can go back and watch some of my weekly prep videos to see that. And then once the market kind of opens up, then uh, I develop some more if then statements and we get even tighter and all the key levels are, are uh, sent inside of the private channel. So I, 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 I really am looking forward to this week, but I, I will say that you're going to need to, you know, make sure that your risk is within parameters and that you, you control it so that, um, you know, you don't get caught in the backside of a trade or you don't get caught in a trade that uh, goes against you and you can't get out of it or anything like that. So watch your swings as well. Uh, we'll be looking for a possible rejection around that, that um, 412, 412, 44 area, 412, 50 area. And then, um, you know, ultimately coming back down here to about that 404 area with a floor of 402, uh, nine area there on, on spy. And it looks like the volume needs to adjust too. So my levels have adjusted this week for sure. The volume is shifting and adjusting for sure. We're going to need to trade in this area here. There needs to be a liquidity shift. No doubt about it. Uh, we ran very aggressive and hot. I do not believe this move is sustainable. If we do have an aggressive Monday, I think by Wednesday, we do see some pullback uh, of that nature and uh, we're going to trade it either way. All right. So that's our, our weekly prep there. And let me just take a look back here at, uh, and as you notice on my screen, every time when we trade here, I'm going to have a, uh, an indication that, that, you know, we're trading with BVP. So, so everything that I do is based on this system called BVP, right? And so every time that I, I do a prep or train you guys, I'm going to remind you of the components that I'm looking for. And I want you to think about the things that we're going through. If you're new to my channel, if you're new to the Discord, why is this guy commenting on these po or these these points here? What does this matter uh, to the market to me? And then I want you to track the levels. I want you to track. All right, you know wh where is he going with this thing? Where where did the, did the market actually respect those areas? Did the market actually you know hit those areas? And if it does, then that should continue to help you build some confidence. All right, so now as we talk live here, obviously we can see the market is uh, kind of dancing around and just opening. I'll be watching here, right? And this is great. This is why I chose to do the do the um, prep just a little bit early today because I'm going to be watching for liquidity to come in here and for it to hold here. If 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 I see a sign of weakness, I'm going to fade this, take a trade. I'll call it out in the futures channel uh, if though if some are in there. I'm going to short this thing right to right down to uh, four one sixteen here. So let's go ahead and go down to a lower time frame. We've already got down. So we've got a trade in this area here and we'll be watching this, this key area here with a possible move up to or an attempt to 4150 area. We know there's liquidity sitting up there. We're gonna be tight in this range here and then we'll look for a breakout at, at some point, all right? I'll take some questions here. Um, there's some awesome videos that my team was able to put together. I recorded for you guys and they loaded about A plus setups. So go look at the last uh, video. A plus setups. You can look at the video for today. We discussed uh, with one of the traders in the Discord uh, their success, how they were able to string together a successful uh, week green all week. Go look at that video. The lessons learned there, and we're going to do more of those when we talk to different traders that I've trained in the Discord. We're going. I talk to you guys, but it's important for others to hear about your uh, your journey as well and see what's working, what's not working, and how you can improve. That's how you get better. All right. Remember, this thing is about progress, not perfection. If you have any questions, I'll take them in the spy only options room. Other than that, folks, I will see you bright and early 850 in the spy voice for the general public. And um, the levels will be posted in the private channel. And then uh, we can go and crush this thing. We went to the bank last week. We're going back to make another withdrawal. I'll see you guys in a minute.